This is a 1993 Dodge Ram Charger, and it's an SUV from before SUVs were family crossovers with massaging seats and 14 screens to roll down the windows. Back in the day, SUVs were this body on frame, huge V8, four miles per gallon, the Ram Charger. And today I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it with no fees on Cars and Bids. And we've had some fantastic sales recently, including this Rivian R1T, which sold for $106,000, this wonderful Mercedes AMG GTS Coupe, which brought $93,000, and this Vanderhall three-wheel roadster thing, which sold for just over $35,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. With daily auctions and great selection, check it out at carsandbids.com. So let's talk Ram Charger. The original Ram Charger came out back in 1974 as a big old full-size SUV meant to rival the Ford Bronco and Chevy Blazer from that era. At one point in the 1970s, you could get a Ram Charger with a 7.2 liter V8 that made 220 horsepower. <laughs> The 70s were not kind to cars, but they were kind to SUVs because the modern SUV sort of got started in the 1970s, although back then they were very different from what they are today. Back then, an SUV was a vehicle not for a suburban family, but instead for like a hunter or a park ranger or a person with property in the mountains or people who kept deer as pets. Yes, the Ram Charger is an SUV relic from a different era, and it held on as long as it could, all the way through 1993, and this one comes from the final model year. Interestingly, they did sell a next-generation Ram Charger in Mexico, but they never brought it to the United States. It was based on the Dodge Durango, and if you live in Mexico, near San Diego, and you have one of these in nice shape, please reach out to me, because I would kill to review one. But for now, I'll settle for this 1993 U.S. market Ram Charger in amazing condition. First, I'll take you on a tour of this Ram Charger and show you all of the quirks and features of an old-school SUV from a bygone era. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of the 93 Ram Charger with some general amazement of this interior. It just feels so old. This is a 1993 model, but the Ram Charger came out in 74, and the only really big update was in 81. Otherwise, there were just sort of minor updates here and there. So even though this is a 93 model, it looks like a 70s or an 80s car in here. I can't believe this lasted all the way to 93 with this interior. And it's kind of funny because the interior has some interesting like mashup of old and new. For instance, the steering wheel looks like a 90s Dodge steering wheel. It has cruise control buttons on it. Looks like the same thing you would have gotten in a caravan or a neon at the time. Same deal with the radio, straight out of any other 90s Chrysler product. Cassette tape, looks like all the rest. But then you look at the dashboard, this upright dash with vertical climate vents, and it looks like a 70s car. And it's so strange to see that stuff next to each other. Also, there's no like center console here. You have a floor console and then the dashboard, but tons of carpeting in between between, unlike most modern 90s cars that had like a plastic center console that came down from the dashboard. So much old school and normal 90s stuff in here. It's just a weird combination. But anyway, next up, I'm going to move on to some of the details in this interior. And I want to go back to the center console. Back when the Ram Charger came out in the mid 1970s, the center console could be used as an ice chest. So you could put ice in it and then put drinks in it, use it as a cooler so you could 
drink while you drove along. Needless to say, the 70s were a very different time. Obviously, by 1993, when this Ram Charger came out, the ice chest center console was long gone, but it does have a little center console storage area, and when you open it up, you can see gun storage. Because, of course, you have a little gun storage installed in the center console. It perfectly fits with the type of person who was buying a Ram Charger back in the 90s, a big, burly, manly man who carried a gun everywhere he went, to the point where he actually needed lockable gun storage built into his vehicle. Like I said, SUVs were different back then. Another good example of the differences in SUVs between this and modern models is how you get into four-wheel drive. In a new SUV, you just push a little button on the dashboard. In this thing, there was a giant lever sticking up from the floor in the center, and it wasn't actually centered in the car, or particularly nice looking. It was sort of off to one side, sort of randomly, and it just stuck up, and you had to shift it manually to get it into four-wheel drive. Totally different from today's much more user-friendly SUVs and crossovers. With that said, the Ram Charger did have some nice luxury touches. For instance, you had cruise control, like I already mentioned. You can turn it on and use it with these buttons on the steering wheel. You also had power mirrors over here to the side. You just move this little switch and then you can adjust the mirrors automatically. And you had power windows and they are the fastest power windows I have ever seen. Take a look at these things go up and down. They're like high performance power windows. I don't know why they made them so fast, but they did. And by the way, speaking of windows, one other nice luxury in this car, you had little vent windows. You could unlatch the little front vent window and then move it to the side and get extra airflow into the interior. This truck had air conditioning, but the vent windows gave you a little bit more air before you had to turn on the AC. And that is a pretty cool touch. I wish modern cars still had openable vent windows. But while those features were some nice touches, the real luxury feature came in the back seats. First, I'm going to talk about how to get into the back seats. You had a little latch coming off the front seat only on the passenger side. You didn't have one on the driver's side, so you had to access the back seats from the passenger side. But anyway, you have this little latch, and you would lift it up and then push the seat forward, and the entire seat would come forward as one unit. Instead of like the backrest folding forward and the bottom part sliding, forward, the entire seat came forward in its normal position. And you also had a hydraulic down here that would keep the seat folded forward so people could get in and out of the back. But anyway, once the seat was folded forward, it was pretty easy to climb into the back and then you were back here. And actually, it is reasonably roomy in the back seat, good enough for taking around kids if you wanted. Even though this wasn't offered with four doors, you had a pretty nice back seat. But I said I was gonna tell you about the luxury feature back here, and that would be on the ceiling, you had a vent, a roof vent in this vehicle, which is something you never really see. You see sunroofs, but this is like an RV-style roof vent, just a little square cut out into the roof, very strange. Now, unfortunately, it's not a window when it's closed, so you can't see out of it. You have to open it up to get any benefit from it, and then I guess you would get some fresh air. Also, strangely, it's not actually over the back seats. It's more over the cargo area when you really look at the placement, which isn't really the best thing. But nonetheless, you have a roof vent in your Ram Charger, which is something I don't think I've seen in any other vehicle except for like an RV or a bus. Kind of strange. Now, other luxuries in the back seat were few and far between. You did have speakers back here, but they're just sort of black plastic ones tacked on to the beige interior. They very much look like an afterthought, but hey, at least you had some rear speakers. You also had another cool feature back here, these huge rear windows, absolutely massive going down the entire side of the car, and they sort of curve up to the roof too, giving you a little bit of a view upwards and kind of a panoramic, airy, open feeling back here, which is pretty neat. It's kind of neat to sit back here and look out these massive windows. You don't get that in modern SUVs. With four doors, obviously you can't have windows this big, and it really is a cool touch in the back seats. And next up, we move on to the cargo area in the Ram Charger. You pop open the tailgate, and you can see back here the cargo area is quite large. The Ram Charger was a large vehicle, and it has a large cargo area, and you can make it larger. This latch over on the side of the back seat folds down the rear seat backrest for more space, or you can fold up the entire rear seat, push it up against the front seats, and then you have even more space back here, and you have basically an enclosed pickup truck at that point if you want to transport big stuff in the back of your Ram Charger. 
Now, one other item you can also see in this cargo area is the spare tire, which is positioned over here on the passenger side of the cargo area. This was a common placement for SUV spare tires back in the day. It made them easier to access, but it did steal some cargo space. Now, this spare tire, you can see, has a cover over it, carpeting and vinyl to match the rest of the interior. Looks a lot nicer than just a regular exposed spare tire. This cover was part of the Canyon Sport trim level of this Ram Charger. That was the top end trim level, and this was the final model year, so this is the best of the last Ram Charger models. Although, the Canyon Sport was technically called the Canyon Sport Advantage Package. I know that because I possess right here the original window sticker to this Ram Charger from 1993. And you can see a base price of $21,696 and then the Canyon Sport Advantage package below that, which added a lot of nice things. You got AM FM stereo and cassette, you got air conditioning, power windows and locks, power mirrors, but it also came at a hefty price tag, almost $4,800 extra for this package, which adds like 25% to the price of the entire your vehicle. It was tremendously expensive to get the Canyon Sport, and it contributed to a sticker price of almost $28,500 back in 93. That was a lot of money. Now, fortunately, there was a Dodge discount applied of $2,400, which got the total price down to around $26,000 for this Ram Charger Canyon Sport back in 93. The original window sticker, pretty cool to see. Also on the original window sticker, you can see the fuel economy, which was 11 city and 15 highway. Not the best gas mileage. The owner of this truck tells me that he gets about 12 and a half miles per gallon driving it around. <laughs> It is not an efficient vehicle. Again, very different from modern SUVs. By the way, in addition to the window sticker, I have here the original paperwork from when this truck was purchased, July 10, 1993 in Colorado, and a few dealer installed options that were supposed to be going on the truck before it was delivered to the original owner. The current owner of this truck bought it from the family of the original owner who had it for years, and that's probably why it's in such amazing condition today. But anyway, next up, moving outside the Ram Charger Canyon Sport, there are a lot of quirks and features to cover on the outside, and I'm going to start with the tailgate. I love the giant Dodge written across the tailgate, like a pickup truck tailgate, frankly, that you would see back in the day, just Dodge written out, making it very clear what this vehicle is. Now, interestingly, on the tailgate, there is no rear wiper for this back window, even though that's a pretty common thing that SUVs have, especially the nicest trim level of the final model year. You didn't get one, but the Ram Charger did offer a rear wiper in Mexico. Mexican models had them, but not here in the United States, which seems like an odd decision based on the differences in weather, but whatever. You do have a little decal back here that's warning you to avoid exhaust gases coming into the interior. Keep the tailgate closed when the vehicle is on. That decal, nice and original and interesting to see it preserved. Sort of a strange warning. And next up, we move on to some other notable items on the outside of the Ram Charger. And the first thing I want to highlight is this truck is just in in amazing condition, truly remarkable shape. You have the two-tone paint job that was pretty common on SUVs from this era. Everything has held up tremendously well. The truck is fantastic, and that's uncommon. Ram chargers were not bought to preserve. People bought them to use, to take hunting, to go into the mountains, and you don't see them like this. I especially love this gold pinstripe across the body, and you can see near the back, it actually says Canyon Sport integrated into the pinstripe so you could flex on all those non-Canyon Sport Ram Charger owners. The other notable item out here is the wheels. This Ram Charger has these nice alloy wheels that were only offered on the top versions of the Ram Charger and the Dodge Ram pickup truck at the time. You can see in the center it says Dodge Division, and there's actually a Ram logo in there. That was the new Dodge logo that was being adopted in the early 1990s, and it just made it onto the Ram Charger for a year or two before this truck was canceled, and then other vehicles adopted the logo more widely. And by the way, speaking of Ram badging, you can see the giant Ram hood ornament on the front of this Ram Charger. Interestingly, this is not a factory hood ornament. Dodge did put Ram hood ornaments on Ram Chargers throughout the 1980s, but they stopped in like 1990 or so. However, people liked it so much that a lot of them had dealerships order another hood ornament and stick it on their later Ram Charger models. So this is a D 
dealer installed accessory from the period that was probably done back when this truck was new. You can also see up front here, you have a red painted grill with sort of a cross or a plus sign design. That was only done on the very latest model year Ram Charger models to try to get them to fit in with the other vehicles in the Dodge lineup that were also adopting that corporate grill. And so that's why it has sort of a modernized grill on this old school SUV. Now the grill did help modernize the Ram Charger and tie it in with the rest of the Dodge lineup, but this still would have stuck out in Dodge showrooms in 1993. By then they were making the Intrepid that looked like this, a far more modern vehicle. This would have been in dealers at the same time as the original Viper. <laughs> this old blocky old school SUV. So the grill may have helped modernize it a little bit, <laughs> there wasn't much you could do. And for further proof of just how old school the Ram Charger was, we open up the hood where you can see the 5.9 liter V8, massive old school naturally aspirated V8 that made all of 200 horsepower. Now this was actually an upgraded engine over a smaller V8. You could get the big 5.9 and it was a bit of a bargain. It was only $399 extra. You can see right here on the window sticker for a 5.9 liter V8. V8, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Although 200 horsepower, maybe it wasn't really worth it. But the more power, the better in this giant behemoth of a vehicle. Now you can see in this engine bay, there's actually a lot of room left. You could have gotten a lot more engine in here if you had wanted. But it's a big old school engine bay with a lot of room for engine and a lot of room to work on the engine. You also have a little light in here. When you open up the hood, you can see this little bulb illuminates what you're doing. So you can see when you're trying to fix your ramp charger at night if it breaks down. So those are the quirks and features of the Ram Charger itself, but I still have a little more to show you. You see, the owner of this truck is very proud of it, as he should be. This is probably the nicest Ram Charger left on the planet. But anyway, he's very proud of it, so he has some materials that go along with it. And I have found some amazing quirks within these materials. For example, this folder is the 1993 Dodge sales consultant product guide. In other words, this is what they would give to the salespeople at dealerships to teach them how to sell the vehicles. And for the Ram Charger, there's some amazing stuff in here, including strategy that a salesperson can use to sell this against the Ford Bronco. The Bronco at the time was a much newer, more modern vehicle, but that didn't stop Dodge from coming up with some ways that this truck had an advantage. And you can see it actually lists the advantages here. More standard horsepower than the Bronco, greater cargo volume than the Bronco, higher level of standard equipment, and my favorite, the last bullet point, this is a rugged, durable Dodge truck. The Ford Bronco didn't have that. If none of your other salesman advantage points were landing, you just tell the person, hey, this is a rugged, durable Dodge truck. And then maybe they would choose the Ram Charger over the Bronco. I love that piece of the salesperson training guide. I also have here from the owner of this truck, a brochure from back when the Ram Charger was new, an actual Ram Charger brochure from back in the day. I love this particular page that shows four of these things together. This was the last time four Ram Chargers were ever together in one place outside of a park ranger parking lot. <laughs> early 1990s. But my favorite thing here is when it lists the standard and optional equipment of the truck, you will notice the roof vent is standard on all Ram Charger models, which is nice and generous. Although if you go right above that, you will see the radio is optional. <laughs> So these came with a standard roof vent, but they didn't come with a radio unless you paid extra. Again, like I said, it was a different time in the world of SUVs back in the early 90s. And so those are the quirks and features of the 1993 Dodge Ram Charger. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the Ram Charger, which was the raddest truck at Radwood in 2019 in California. And it deserves it. It is so difficult to find these in nice shape anymore. It's amazing how well this was preserved. And really it's crazy that this was sold all the way through 1993. I mentioned the models that was sold alongside of it. I mean, the Jeep Grand Cherokee was out by 93. And then also this thing. The Grand Cherokee was just better in every measurable way. But you know, these days this is kind of like 
the old school SUV and these have become a lot more desirable and cool. Now, one funny thing the owner told me when he goes to try to get it insured or to do something with the registration, whatever, he'll say, you know, they'll ask what model is it? And he'll say, it's a Ram Charger. And they'll say, sir, is it a Ram or is it a Charger? <laughs> no, 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 look, it's a Ram Charger. That was something. No, sir, I think you're mistaken. There is the Ram and then there's the Charger. <laughs> They named this thing after two vehicles that were largely unrelated to each other. Although when you think about it, the Ram was a pickup and the earlier Charger models were coupes and this is sort of a truck coupe. So maybe it makes sense. But okay, let's talk about driving experience. First off, like I've already said, it's truly unbelievable to me that I'm driving around in this thing and it's from 1993. Um, it just feels... <laughs> ancient, which it is. I mean, this body style of the Ram Charger, the Ram Charger came out in 74. This body style was updated for 81. There weren't that many changes after that. Uh, by the time the late 80s came about, it was becoming clear that, you know, smaller SUVs were becoming more desirable. And Chrysler put a lot of its efforts towards Jeeps, uh, even at that point. So you had the Grand Cherokee come out in 92. The Cherokee was being modernized. It was becoming the real success. And these full-size SUVs just weren't really all that popular. And after the Ram Charger, Chrysler didn't even bother to come out out with another full-size SUV, and some would say they never did. Although the Dodge Durango came out in the late 90s, it was never quite like the Chevy Suburban Ford Expedition type vehicle. Uh, this was sort of the last of that breed for Chrysler. So obviously the driving experience, very old school. You know, you press the accelerator pedal and you hear that, that rumbly V8. You can obviously see I go over bumps. Oh, suspension, it is not comfortable in this truck, but these weren't built for any of that stuff. These were built for like mountain men. That's who bought SUVs back in this era. And I remember SUVs honestly were kind of a weird purchase. By 93, they were getting more normal. But when this was a 70s, 80s, when this was like new, it was something that was only bought by the type of person who, you know, has a gun or would want to drink in their ice chest while they were driving it. It wasn't a normal vehicle like it is now. And frankly, these are only really just starting to get like really cool. Like now that everybody wants an SUV, having that vintage feel is becoming cool. And so basically what I'm saying is the people who bought these back then were willing to put up with the way that this truck drove. It's rumbly in here, it's loud. It feels like a pickup, that's what it was. It was a full-size Dodge Ram pickup truck just enclosed in the back. There wasn't much more to it. You had a big V8, didn't have much power. It did have pretty good torque. I think it was over 300 pound feet, but this was just intended to be like a big old truck that happened to be enclosed for people who wanted, you know, maybe a little bit more off-road capability to go hunting. Honestly, very cool to drive it today. Everybody freaks out over it. The owner told me people stop at him all the time asking to buy it. Just cruising around in it, there's a lot of people who are looking at me while I was filming. People ask me about it. Um, it's a special vehicle. People want to know about it. They want to hear about it. It's not something you really see anymore, especially this well-preserved in this color. It just looks great. But, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. It's not that great to drive. It's rumbly. It's loud. It's slow. Terrible fuel economy. Not many amenities. There's not that much to love about this from a purely driving perspective, except for the sheer cool and fun factor of driving it. Like knowing you got this cool old school thing full of character. And that's what I love about it. And I think that's what a lot of the guy next to me in an SL is taking a picture. <laughs> that's what this truck inspires. This is a cool vehicle. It's neat and it's exciting. And that's why it's fun certainly isn't the driving experience. It's more about like the community around this car and just how special and interesting it is today. And so that's the Dodge Ram Charger. It is truly amazing that this is only 30 years old. Today's SUVs feel many decades ahead of this in terms of technology, styling, equipment, refinement, acceleration, performance, fuel economy, everything really. But it is amazing to spend the day with this old school Ram Charger and take a look at how SUVs used to be. Anyway, now it's time to give the Ram Charger a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 39 out of 100, placing the Ram Charger here against other similar vehicles, dead last. But that's not really a surprise, as most of these other SUVs are high-performance models, or very capable off-road, or at least way more practical. The Ram Charger is none of these things, but it's still very cool for feel and design, which really are a reminder of a totally different era of SUV. I'm sure I'll never again see another Ram Charger as nice as this one, so I'm thrilled I had the chance to experience one of the last truly old school SUVs. Hey!